Would you please pray with me? Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So sometimes sermons are the sort of moments that can be read and reflected on kind of in all times and places. I mean, you see this kind of when you watch TV and you watch preachers on TV, right? You see people like, um, like maybe Joel Osteen, they preach sermons that, that people show up for in that Sunday morning um, at, their, at their worship space in their big arena in, in Texas. But then there are also sermons that you can kind of catch on TV days, weeks, months, even years later on TV after like a football game that you forgot to turn the channel, right? Uh, some, some sermons have that sort of many time and place feel to them, um, there's even books of sermons. If you go to like the religion department at Barnes & Noble or someplace, guaranteed you'll probably find a couple books there. They're just books of sermons of different people that wrote them, and they kind of, again, stand the test of time. You could read a sermon, and, and it still has application now. I mean, I have a book at home of, of a sermons from one pastor in the Pittsburgh area, and it's kind of great to read these sermons from other times and places, and they still have value and power reading them now. If I'm honest, I can even look back at some of my sermons that I've written in the past five years, and sometimes they work very well if I were to get to preach them right now on this morning. To be clear, I didn't. New material today. Um, sometimes we can find, though, that there is a specific thing on a certain day that needs preached to. And I've looked back at some sermons and thought, what was I thinking? But then there's other sermons I thought, Something was going on in that moment that needed to be spoken to. Um, And so over these last few weeks, there's been a lot of heaviness here in our church community. And I think God calls us this morning to meditate on that. And so this sermon is a moment sermon, speaking to this moment. Of course, a disclaimer. The risk, the risk and a reality that exists with um, these particular sorts of sermons, approaching it for this moment, um, and really this applies to any given sermon, any given Sunday, is that it doesn't relate to everybody. Again, this is the reality for every Sunday sermon, but some Sundays the sermons just aren't going to be right for you. So I encourage you on those moments, and maybe in this moment, to think about the person sitting next to you, or in front of you, or behind you, or across the aisle from you. Consider them and the reality they may be going through. So I want to talk about the heaviness of these last few weeks. First of all, it's been the holidays. Holidays are heavy times of year, aren't they? They're crazy. On one hand, we as the Western culture, we've put Christmas as like the be-all, end-all holiday. Like the tradition um, and the emotion, the expectation that goes into that day are bigger than pretty much any other time of year. If you look at our secular culture, there is no bigger day than Christmas. Of course, we as Christians would say that Easter is a far more important day, but Christmas is big. Holidays become this time of almost like mythological and mystical time, so big, a time that we build up in our minds. Our expectations become almost, and sometimes they do become unobtainable and unreachable. There's no room physically, chronologically, and especially emotionally for the reality that actually happens. Reality is like death, sadness, being sick. These last weeks have been tough in this church community. We've lost some dear people around these walls. Lost a person who was a regular and well-loved person here in worship and many other circles of this church community. Active right up until she passed away. We lost a person who with her and her family have been long, long, long time parts of this church community, though not so much recently actively being present, but long history here. We lost a younger person, shockingly and frighteningly, this past week. A person who many of us have spent much time, much emotional time, much energy time, much praying time, considering and hoping for over these last three and a half years. We in this community have lost sisters, we've lost brothers, many cards have been written, many miles driven to funeral homes and to funeral worship moments, many prayers prayed, many moments alone thinking of 
others. Much time spent planning those activities, cooking meals in preparation for them. Much emotional energy spent in community while death and loss happens as we jointly stand with each other, bearing each other's loss along with our own. Sitting Shiva with each other, with those we love. Add to that that this is a season of darkness. Wake up in the darkness and often come home from work while it's dark. Add to that historically cold days this past week. Add to that snow and ice, roads that make us tense just at the thought of driving out on them. Add to that the labor of cleaning off our sidewalks and our driveways in unhealthily cold weather, in dangerous weather. It's easy to feel overwhelmed, right? It's easy to feel exhausted. It's easy to wonder. It's easy to cry. It's easy to hurt. It's easy to be angry. And it's easy to get stuck. If that's how you feel, I understand. Maybe part of this sermon is a little bit of a therapeutic session for me, but I'm confident I'm not alone. Despite my desire to make a blanket statement, I will say most of us here, I think, understand these emotions that I have laid out. Many of us find ourselves in similar places, and that's what it is to be in Christian community with one another. When one hurts, we all hurt. And on this day, this Christian community began around something special and unique amidst all of that. We began around that baptismal font located uniquely in the back of the church today. For all of time, people have found water to be life-renewing and life-giving. It is at the very core of our physical makeup, right? We're made of water. Without a great amount of water consumed daily, we die. But even beyond the necessity of water in our lives, we see the beautiful repercussions of water, don't we? Mixed with tea leaves and coffee grounds, it makes this beautiful beverage that warms our bodies. When cooled down and worked in with some citrus, it refreshes our bodies in ways we can't even describe. Upon emerging from a bath or shower, we feel so rejuvenated and so reinvigorated, don't we? Water is this amazing element of life that God has given to us as a gift. And so it's no surprise that God uses that gift, that basic foundation of life, and makes God's people welcome in it. When used with words claiming our name and that we are baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are reclaimed by God. With three splashes of water on our heads, God replenishes us with God's love everlasting. And so we stand on days like this. Not only the beginning of the baptism of our Lord, but especially the baptism of our Lord. Feeling droplets of water on our heads. I tried to get it on all your heads. Passing by the font and dipping our fingers in those waters and putting them on our heads, reminding us of that love God has for us. Seeking the rejuvenation that God has long promised us. Yearning for the healing and the wholeness that that we seem to lack in our lives. That water. Those promises of God that promise of God loving us, they seem as an oasis for us in these frigid weeks of winter, in this tundra of these last few weeks of holiday seasons. And so we stand changed on this morning after that encounter at the baptismal font. We are changed people right now. People made new. So I hope you're paying attention to these long readings every week. We've been reading through Matthew um, chronologically right through from beginning to end over this next year, and I hope you're paying attention to these readings. They're longer than normal, but you don't have three rapid-fire readings. Did you hear the story for today? Did you listen with your ears? Did you see the way in which we are made new when we encounter Jesus through baptism according to Matthew? Look no further than John the Baptist. Did you hear his words? Did you hear his tone of voice in chapter 3 of Matthew's gospel? Let me just pull out John's words and read them to you. Maybe be careful to the sound person because the emotion's important in these words and I'll try to replicate it. John's words. Repent! 
The kingdom of heaven has come near. My favorite. You brood of vipers. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the foot of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. He continues on. I baptize you with water for repentance, but one who is more powerful than I, he's coming. He's coming after me. I'm not worthy to untie his sandals, to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire, his winnowing fork in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and will gather his wheat into his granary, and his chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Can you imagine John the Baptist saying these words? I, I, I can't even do them justice. I feel like I should be down there on the floor screaming them into Jeff's face and pointing at him as I say these words. They're those kinds of words, right? Do you feel the edginess in his words? Do you feel the overwhelmed? Do you feel the exhaustion? Do you feel the jaded, the anger, the crying, the stuck that John is immersed in? Do you get it? But then, then Emmanuel, Jesus, shows up. And John has one line after Jesus shows up. Compare all those words to these words. I need to be baptized by you. And yet you come to me. Indeed, God comes to you. God comes to us. God comes to us in cold, in darkness, in hurt, in death. God comes to us as we stumble along. And there, God makes us new. Amen.